Today, we're going to learn about community visualizations in Google Data Studio, what they are, how to use them, how to get access to them, and review some examples in action. Hi, this is Ahmed from CRWalk with another lesson from Google Data Studio Essentials. In the previous two lessons, we learned about all the different standard chart types in Google Data Studio. But what if the type of visualizations that we are after is not possible to achieve with any of those default chart types? What if we want something completely different? The good news is, within Data Studio, we have community visualizations and components. The feature is right now in developer preview mode as we speak. And to create a custom component, a community visualization, you either have to be a developer or you need to hire one. But the best news is you don't have to be because people are creating community visualizations and they are sharing them with us. We've already created a few community visualizations in CIOA. You can find them in our blog. Today, we're going to learn what these community visualizations are, how we can get access to the ones that people have created and shared with us, and we are going to review some exciting examples in action. Let's go ahead and get started. Hello and welcome to this new lesson. In the previous lesson, we learned about different chart types in Data Studio. But what if the type of visualization that you want to have is not already covered by any of those charts? What if you want to visualize your data differently? The good news is that within Data Studio, it is possible to create custom data visualizations and components. Data Studio calls them community visualizations, and it's actually a feature that is still in developer preview as we talk. Here's the page. And here you can learn about everything that you need to put together to create a community visualization. As you can see here, it says that you will have the flexibility to use any visualization library, any kind of JavaScript library and CSS to create your visualizations. And then you can define how to start your element, how to tell the story with your data, with that JavaScript library and CSS and some coding knowledge. But you don't have to be a developer or a technical expert to be able to create your own visualizations. It's possible for anyone that creates a custom visualization to share it with others. So people and companies are creating community visualizations and they're sharing it with us. If Google reviews them and then shares them in this little menu in Google Data Studio. So instead of going to add a chart menu and using one of these standard charts, you can open this little menu and access the community visualizations that are approved by Google. There are a few that are featured by Data Studio, Supermetrics, Click Insight, and then you can explore more to see the rest of them. They work quite similarly to the rest of standard Data Studio charts. So for example, this guard chart by Data Studio, let's see how it works. So we have this chart to some, it might look great to some it might look ugly i'm not going to um, discuss that and go into that but let's see we have a metric and we can sort it we can apply default date range and then on this tile tab we can apply a minimal gauge value which i'm going to leave at zero we can set the maximum and we have no users 43,000 here let's put the maximum at 50,000. we can set major tick label and the number of minor tick sections etc and then we can define three different sections, green section, yellow section, and red section. So for example, let's say if there are in the time period, if the business owner is happy with 40 to 50,000 users, it is green. And then it starts to get ugly for them if it's somewhere between 25,000 and 40,000 users. Okay. This is where they get worried uh, because they have... <laughs> fewer users that they expected and anything between zero and 25,000 means that actually someone's going to get fired. Basically that's it. So uh, it has the same data properties tab and it has the same style tab, just like any other standard chart in data studio. Now let's take a look at some community visualizations that I have found more interesting or useful. This is the first one. 
Sumbest. The Sumbest chart shows one metric over multiple dimension and it uses this kind of rings to show the distribution of that metric across different categories within that dimension. Here I have revenue by product category and product. The main ring in the middle, which is darker in shade, represents product category. We can see Nest here, apparel here, office drinkware, and it's quite like the tree map visualization that we saw in the previous lesson. So the underlying data set is basically the same, revenue, product category, and product. But here we have a different kind of visualization. If we hover over any of these, we can see that product category, for example, had 71% share of revenue across all categories. And then we can move the mouse cursor to the outer ring to see the actual products within that category, the actual Nest product within the Nest category in this example, and how much was their share of revenue across the single category, okay? And if required, we can have another ring, another dimension as well. Let's take a look at another example. Here we have one metric, sessions, and three dimensions, landing page, second page, and exit page. So we're actually visualizing in kind of a story of how people enter the website, which pages do they land on, what are the second pages that they see, and finally, what is the page that they see the last? What is the page that they actually exit from? The ring in the middle represents the landing page. So for example, we can see that homepage was responsible for 57% of the sessions. And then of those people, 75,000 of them reloaded the homepage, which corresponds to 26% of people who landed on the homepage and 15% of all the sessions within the website. And then if we move another level out, we can see, okay, homepage could have been the exit session for that website as well, but there could be some other pages. So from homepage to homepage and then exited on basket. And remember, there can be different pages between the second page and the exit page. It doesn't mean that they directly went from the second page to the exit page. That was Sunburst. Let's see the next one. This one's quite interesting. This is an animated bar chart. Here I have top 10 cities by revenue from 2017 to date. And this chart type uses a cool animation to show how top 10 cities by revenue change from month to month during this time period. Now here I've chosen to highlight New York, San Francisco, and Mountain View. But depending on the story you want to tell, you can decide which value from your categories do you want to highlight. Maybe you want to see the change of a product revenue or a product categories revenue over time. You can highlight that and see how it changes over time. Let's move on to the heat map. A heat map is quite a straightforward. You can apply two dimension and one metric. Here I have user by day of the week and hour of the day. And this type of visualization uses different shades of a color to show the highest and lowest values for that metric, in this case users, for the combinations, for the different combinations of those two categories. So for example, Thursday at 10 a.m. we had this number of users, but Wednesday and Tuesdays were not so busy either. So for example, if the owner of this business wants to allocate resources to their customer support team, they know that Mondays are quite busy, Thursdays are quite busy, also Fridays and Saturdays. And maybe some employees can take a day off on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Moving on to the next, the funnel visualization, which I'm sure would be exciting for most people. For a long time, when people wanted to create a funnel visualization in Google Data Studio, they had to use a static image as a background and then just overlay some scorecards over that static image. But now with the introduction of this funnel diagram, it's easier than ever to create a funnel visualization in Data Studio. All you need to do is just pick your metrics and then place them in order. The chart will take care of the rest. Here we see how users go through the purchase funnel on this website. How many sessions do we have? How many people and how much percentage of them viewed the collection page? How many product detail views did we have? How many products were added to the basket? How many checkouts? And finally, how many transactions? And immediately we can see 
the bottleneck, the collection page to the product detail views. Maybe they have ugly product images. I don't know. We have to look at the website and see what we can do to increase the percentage of product detail views and encourage people so when they are on a collection page, they want to click on a product. That's it. Let's move on to the next one, the range filter. This one is actually not a visualization, but it's a community component. It's a filter menu that allows us to select the range between a minimum and a maximum number or during a date range to filter the rest of the charts and components on the page. Here we have 3rd of January to 20th of May, and we can use this range filter to limit the amount of data that are represented on the rest of the charts on this page. You noticed that as I adjusted the range, this trend line changed and the scorecards above also refreshed to reflect the new numbers. Let's take a look at the final example, the Sankey chart. The Sankey chart is good to show the relationship between categories of two or more dimensions. Here I have gender, device category, and age range. I can hover my mouse pointer on each of these sections to highlight the relationship between each pair of categories, male users on mobile, female users on desktop, or for example, desktop users that are 18 to 24 years old. That's it. Now you know that within Data Studio, it is possible to create custom visualizations and components and share it with others. You know where to find them, how to use them, and we also reviewed some of the most interesting ones together. Thank you very much and see you in the next lesson. In this lesson, we learn about community visualizations and components, where to find them and how to use them. Next, we learn how to bring life to our report by adding report interactions. Did you learn anything new today? I hope you did. Feel free to test your knowledge by taking the quiz for this lesson or continue to the next. As always, you can find the links in the descriptions below. If you're new to Major School, make sure to subscribe so you can get notified of the future videos that we publish. And if you have a question, any question, feel free to leave a comment. I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.